Hey guys, so today I'm going to be fitting a new cruise control setup to my cruiser here uh, using the Auto Strata cruise control system. These are a mob over east in Australia. So they make one for the FTE 70 series, um, which is obviously the engine that is in my cruiser in my 80 series. So I've got an FTE in here with the drive by wire pedal, as you can see there. So the original cruise control, which it was in my Sahara 80, which is the old ECU sort of unit here, I did have that fabbed up with the cable. So the cable was just pulling on the pedal. Uh, you can probably sort of see it, hopefully. Anyway, just gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, I do have a video on setting that up in my other videos, so if you wanna check that out. However, the cable setup wasn't too great because it's a drive-by wire pedal pulling with a cable, mechanical unit. It, the sort of the polling rate wasn't quite good and it used to sort of lurch back and forward and hesitate when it got to the speed and vice versa. So it was, it was pretty shit. So I contacted Autostrada and I said, hey, I've got a 80 series. Um, I want to retain my factory cruise control stalk. And I said, yep, no dramas. So the factory cruise control stalk in the 80 series is five wire. So these are the five wires here. So you've got the red wire, which was the main on-off switch, the yellow, which is cancel, purple, set coast, orange, resume cancel, and black is the negative. And these are what they turn into on the other side, which is what the color of the wires are down at the ECU. And the Autostrada uses a two wire, which is quite common in all the new cars. So how they work is they work on resistance. So I've got this little configuration of resistors here. And what I'm going to do is cut the cancel wire, retain the factory ground, and then all three of the others are gonna all join to the cancel through resistors. So that is my little combo here. So I just gotta solder that in. I then have to use the little jumper harness for the pedal. That'll plug into the ECU here. And then the other harness, which comes in the kit, these ones connect to the ECU as well. And then I've got it connected into the brake pedal switch, which you can sort of just see there. There's a little jumper harness for this one. So I get the brake signal. And then for the clutch, I've got a little clutch switch that I'm gonna wind in where the factory stopper used to go. And that'll give me my clutch signal. So when you push the clutch in, it'll deactivate the cruise control. You require that by law. And then I just need to have a few little wires that I need to wire in. So on the cruise control plug here, I've got my power, I've got my ground, I've got my cancel wire, which I'm going to use for the stalk, and I have got the speed signal from, I actually take this from the back of the cluster. On the back of the cluster here, they have a little digital converter, even though this is a mechanical speedo. Um, so you can take that over from in the kick panel over there on the uh, four-wheel drive computer there is actually a speed signal sense because it needs to know when the vehicle is moving so it can either put it into low range or not put it in low range so if you don't say 50 k's an hour it won't allow it to go into low range so it needs that digital speed signal there so you can take a signal off there and that'll give you a nice signal for your cruise control so now i'm just going to disconnect the battery i'm going to wire in all the wires that i need to wire neaten her up and then, with any luck, I'm going to have working digital cruise control in my 80 series using the factory stalk. So stay tuned. Alrighty, so I've wired the cruise control up. So this is the obviously the ECU for it, or the controller, whatever you want to call it. I've wrapped all the harness in tester tape, which is just like a fabric cloth style tape. Uh, the only one that is still left is the clutch switch. So I'll just run that once I've mounted this ECU. I'll run this where it wants to go. This is the factory cruise. So I've just cut all the wires off that I require and uh, put the harness up there. So we've just got the factory harness. And we've got the one that goes up to the pedal and the one that goes to the brake switch. So it all looks quite nice, nice and neat. Not going to any, get any rubbed wires. So yeah, so now I just go to solder in the three resistors. So I've just twisted them together 
So now I cut the wires and solder these ones in, heat shrink them all, and test tape those, and then put it all back together again. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle, which is the switch, is done. So the yellow, which is the cancel wire, just goes straight through, and then the other three um, terminate off that yellow wire through resistors. So straight through is obviously cancel, and then you got your your three others. So I've just put the soldered the resistors all on, and then slip heat shrink over each one. So the resistors are all insulated from each other, and then I wrapped it all in some tester tape. So that's not the most glamorous looking connection, but it'll work. And once it's under the dash, all buttoned up with the coverings over it, it'll be perfectly fine. So now I'm just gonna put the trims back on, neat it up, and take it for a test. Okay, so it's been about a week since the previous video. I've just tested the cruise control by bridging the clutch switch, but I now have received my new clutch switch, which is an M10 one. So this winds in where the old stop used to go. It's an old metal switch, very nice. Similar to the other one I showed you, but obviously M10 rather than M8. So I'm going to fit that up now, and that'll complete the portion of the cruise control. So when I was testing it, it was still a little bit jerky, and that's what it was happening with the old mechanical setup. So I'm thinking that some of the jerkiness, not all of it, obviously it's awesome having it fully electronic now. It doesn't mean the pedal's not getting pulled in and out when I'm driving. Um, that, would just, that was making it even worse. It's definitely a lot better now with the electronic setup, but I think there's room for improvement. So I think that my Speedo sense is not excellent. So as I said before, I've taken it off the back of the cluster and how that works is just a little mechanical reed switch. So obviously this car is about 26 years old. Uh, no, more than that actually. It is uh, 30 years old. So, you know, pretty old component. I think that uh, if the Speedo is not exactly ideal, that might be making the cruise control not work properly. So I've got a new Hall Effect sensor for the gearbox. So this will replace the factory speed sensor which is no longer operational so i'll just unbox this and i'll show you how it's all working so this is the sensor here so it's a replacement for the factory sensor so it looks a little bit different but it's the same principle so it'll have the speedo drive that still goes through for the cable so it's still mechanical and then it gives you electronic component of the speedo and then it gives you a new little drive piece but i can probably just retain the old one so I'm going to have to take the old sensor off and still the little, there's a little adapter piece that goes on here and we'll put that onto this sensor, but it should all work quite well. So I'll put the company where I got this sensor from in the description. Uh, they're an Australian company, the instrumentation company over east. And it was about 120 bucks, I think it was. So yeah, all I have to do is chop off the plug and put on the factory plug. But other than that, it's pretty much a direct replacement. So Unfortunately, I've already made the heart and harness all pretty, but I'm going to have to unwrap all my hard work and wire in the old Speedo cable, um, which is inside the cruise control harness, and wire up to the vehicle speed sensor on the cruise control computer because I've used a, a different cable that I ran previous to this for the old cruise control. So a little bit of going backwards here, but uh, hopefully it's all for the better. We shall see. Okay, so the harness is all wired up now. So tucked it in just behind there, just above the uh, transmission, the old auto trans relay. And then the clutch harness goes here above the steering column. And then you can just see it there. So nice little stopper. Works awesome. And the little light for the cruise control, I've just chucked it up here. This used to be my mobilizer light, but I don't, I don't really see a need for it. So I've just swapped out for the cruise control light rather than drilling out of the hole. So now I'll put the uh, air conducting back in and all the bottom cluster stuff on, all the plastics, and wire up the speedo. Okay, so I've got the speed sensor out of the car. So you can see this is the speed sensor here. So this little end piece here is actually just the adapter that's not part of the speed sensor. This is the actual electronic part of the speed sensor here. So that is basically that, well, like that. So all we're going to do is undo this, put onto this one, making sure we can keep a little adapter piece in there so it works, otherwise you won't get any drive. And then that bit is just per normal. You can see it has a little speedo drive. So one thing you may have noticed if you've got a keen eye is the harness links are rather different. 
So what we're going to have to do is going to chop this one, chop this one and extend it. So just solder it on. So on the factory harness, you got ground, power and signal, which is yellow. And then on this one, we've got same again. We got black and red and blue for signal. So pretty easy. Now I've confirmed that the car side is working. And to do that, what you do is get a multimeter and between on the harness side, so on the gearbox side, you will get 12 volts at between the red and the black wire. And between the black and the yellow wire, you'll get anything other than 12 volts. So this is a digital sensor. So 12 volts is a digital sensor. An analog sensor is five volts supply. So with a digital sensor, you get what we call a pull-up voltage on the sensing wire and it'll be anything other than 12. So in my case, it was about 7.2 volts. So as long as you get a voltage on that signal wire between the ground and signal, that confirms that, that wire is working. So that's how you check that. So we know that the harness side of the car is gonna work. Now we just need to solder these on, plug it in, and all goes well, should work. If it doesn't work, then there's a problem with the sensor because the car side is indeed working. All right, so the harness extension is complete. So here's my three little connectors here. So now I'm just going to wrap the whole lot in some tester tape, which is just the cloth tape that I've been wrapping everything else in. And uh, then we'll put the little adapter on and plug her in. Right, right. tester tape done. Now I put some conduit over it because it's going against the gearbox, so it's going to be pretty warm. So I better to wrap it in some conduit just for that extra protection. Alrighty, so here's a completed speedo drive. So now it's time to put it in the car. Sweet. So I wired in the new Hall Effect sensor or Hall Effect sensor. And I checked it, it was all working sweet. The frequency is as expected when driving, but the cruise control doesn't like it. It won't work. So I hooked up the original back again and it worked. So um, the only difference between them is the Hull effect sensor goes from 7.2 volts to zero and the other one goes from 12 to zero. So uh, I believe the reason that it doesn't like it is because it needs a pull-up resistor between the signal and the power. So that'll pull it up to 12, which is the supply voltage for the sensor, and it'll pull down to zero. Whereas at the moment, it doesn't have any pull-up resistor or any resistor at all by the sounds of it. And it's just floating um, on the signal voltage, which it doesn't quite like. So I'm going to add a 10K resistor between the battery uh, between the supply for the sensor and the signal and that'll pull it up to 12 and then when the Hall Effect sensor go past the magnet it'll collapse it down to zero volts and back up again which this should like a lot better so fingers crossed that works okay so I've just taken the sensor back off the uh, gearbox and I took the pins out of the connector and then poked the resistor through the little rubber grommet and then wrapped it around the sensor I will solder this if it works, but just for now, I just want to be as least intrusive as possible. And uh, now I'll connect it back up. I've just checked it with the multimeter. I'm getting 10K ohms between the signal and uh, ground, uh, power. So now I'll put it in and test it. Your boy did it. It fucking works. You. So 10K resistor, making it a pull-up circuit. Worked a treat. Uh, it's all working fantastic now, and I'm so glad that I piss fart around with all this sort of stuff because um, I took it for a test drive and it is so much nicer. The delivery is beautiful. It stays to the speed you pick it on. It doesn't hesitate, doesn't go up and down. It was very jerky before, which I was a bit annoyed because I just spent 700 bucks on this uh, cruise control trying to fix this problem and it was still not the issue. So uh, I guess in, in hindsight, I probably could have just put a new speed sensor in with the old setup and got it working pretty good, but I'm glad that it's electronic now. Uh, it's got the correct clutch switch. It's all proper. So now for the final time, I'm going to neaten up my harness and she's all ready to go. So here's the uh, completed version. So got the resistor poking through the little seals there, and then I've just soldered it on. So now I'll put it back in the connector and that's that part of it done. A little bit crude, but it works.